Right, today I'm going to be doing something that I've been putting off for a very long time, but something that will also hopefully not take me that long. Um, I'm basically going to be sealing up the uh, trailing edge of the elevators. Um, by sealing up, I mean I need to get some Pro Seal, or I guess they call this Flame Master sealant, and basically kind of glue this on the uh, trailing edge wedge, as well as Clico it together. Um, and also, I need to put some of that same uh, tank sealant, basically glue, on these wedges right here. These are basically these foam spars that go in here and kind of are held on against the skin with that glue. Um, the plans say use this tank sealant. I think it's Flame Master tank sealant. I bought it some in this little bottle right here. Uh, and I was thinking about using some epoxy, but I think part of the reason, and I'm no expert, but just because I'm not an expert, it's never prevented me from offering my viewpoints in the past, so why stop now? Um, I think they use this stuff because it's a little bit more flexible. A lot of epoxy, once it's uh, cured, can be fairly brittle, and this needs to be a little bit flexible. Regardless, it's easiest enough to use, I think. Um, so what I need to do right now is basically put some of that glue adhesive on these two wedges, stick them in here, and then I need to get this trailing edge wedge, this sucker right here, Put some of the same material on this, put it in here like this, and click it together. Now, from everything I gather online, reading the forums and reading people's blogs, never done this myself, but this can be a bit of a trick because you want this to be straight. Um, eventually, when I come go to rivet this together, it needs to be straight. And I think that's part of why they want you to put this adhesive on here so when you rivet it, it's less likely to warp or, um, well, not be straight. I'm not sure how much of an issue it is on the uh, trailing edge for the elevators, um, but it's probably more of an issue for things like the rudders or some of the wings where the trailing edge is longer. Anyway, I want this to be straight. So the plans kind of say maybe put some wood right here and kind of clamp it together, um, but I'm, some of the wood that I bought isn't straight itself and I don't have a joiner. So what I did is I went to uh, Lowe's or Home Depot and I got some of this angle iron. Um, it's actually aluminum angle and I've, kind of measured it or not measured it, but look, it's pretty, it's straight. And what I've done is I've uh, drilled some holes along the edge on this. And what I want to do is after I put some of that Pro Seal on here or Flame Master stuff, I'm going to Clico it against this right here. I'm then going to take another piece of aluminum angle, stick it right here like this and kind of clamp it together. And hopefully that will keep it uh, straight and it'll cure nice and straight. And when I go to rivet it, um, I won't have any waviness in this trailing edge. Anyway, so that's what I'm going to do right now. Uh, also, I bought this sucker right here. I don't know why, but I bought this last year thinking it would make things a lot easier. This is going to be kind of a pneumatic squeezer thing that'll help me dispense some of this uh, uh, tank sealant, hopefully, make, you know, so it won't make too much of a mess. Anyway, this is what I'm going to do. Put some glue on this, stick them in here, shut that, get the trailing edge wedge, put some adhesive on that. Where'd it go? Uh, stick it in there and click everything together and then just let it cure for a few days. So let's get to it. So that's pretty much it for the uh, right elevator. Uh, I'm going to repeat the process for the left ele elevator. I think it went relatively smoothly. Dealing with that uh, uh, pro seal or that uh, tank sealant is kind of a pain in the butt. It's really thick and sticky. Um, I'm not sure if I put too much in there or not enough. Uh, you know, you're supposed to put a really thin coat. If it's too thick, it can cause problems. I definitely don't think I put it on too thick, but then again, maybe I did. 
who knows. Regardless, this thing's done. Um, so hopefully it will cure all right and it'll be nice and straight. And when I go put uh, the rivets in, there'll be no problems. Anyway, that's it for now. So I just finished the final assembly of my trim tabs and I had uh, some video filmed with audio and then realized after they were completed that while I pressed record on the video camera, I didn't press record on my audio recorder. I have to do both. So I have a whole bunch of speaking segments with no sound. So what you're gonna see for this next portion of the video is basically me putting uh, some tank sealant on these foam ribs, shoving those foam ribs inside the trim tabs, um, and then closing them up, putting them in these jigs, and then I rivet the top of the spar, um, top of the spar to the skin. Uh, the instructions say not to do that and to wait until the tank sealant's cured. I got impatient and went and did it anyway. I've been trying to follow the instructions better because I don't always do that and I do want the plane to ultimately fly, but I wanted to get it done, so that's what I did. Anyway, uh, the next few segments that follow uh, are going to be me um, putting the trim tabs together. Uh, I don't mention, I don't know if I uh, recorded this, but when I was uh, riveting the bottom spar, there was a couple rivets that I had to drill out. Um, I'm not always getting good results with back riveting, even though I turned the pressure way down. When I did the elevators, I got fantastic results. Um, but this time I had a couple rivets that just weren't, uh, they kind of want to bend over a little bit. So when I um, back riveted the bottom rib to the second trim tab, I kind of was a little bit more careful and I would just hit it a few times, look at it. If I needed to adjust, you know, I would. And those ones came out all right. I didn't have to drill any of those rivets out. Um, anyway, what you're gonna see now is kind of a time lapse of me putting these suckers together. Uh, so here you go. Right, that's it for the trim tabs. These suckers are done. I'm gonna set these in the house. Just let them sit around for a week or two. Um, and then uh, the tank sealant should be cured and done. So tomorrow, what I'm probably gonna start doing is riveting the uh, trailing edge of the elevators, which is something that I'm not really looking forward to doing because apparently it can be tricky. Or maybe it's not tricky, but the potential for you screwing it up is high. Uh, and if I can screw, if something can be screwed up, there's a really good chance I'm gonna screw it up, so I'm nervous. Uh, regardless, I think I'm going to do that tomorrow. little bit in this video I'm going to talk about how I uh, riveted the trailing edge of the elevators. Riveting the trailing edge was something that I've been worried about for a while because if you do it wrong it ends up really wavy and not straight and you have to make a whole new part and I really didn't want to do that. So after kind of studying a lot on Vans Air Force and other forums and reading people's blogs I kind of did what I think a lot of people do and that's basically this. First thing I uh, after letting the tank sealant uh, set up 
I put all the uh, rivets in place with the manufactured head on the top side, put some rivet tape on it, then I turned it over. And then I riveted it in stages. You don't want to squeeze it all at once, each rivet, because that puts a lot of stress on the surrounding structure and that can cause distortions. So you kind of sneak up on it. You want to squeeze it a little bit at a time in a semi-random pattern. I actually did every fourth or fifth rivet. Then I kind of did the ones in the middle and so on and so forth. Um, so what I did is I put those rivets on, turned the thing over, put the back riveting plate beneath the elevator, and then I started riveting. The first thing I did was I used the uh, rivet gun where I kind of pushed the rivet gun down parallel to the table, or excuse me, perpendicular to the table. Then as I did it, I kind of rotated it so it's parallel or perpendicular to the, uh, the skin. And I only did that a little bit. So I only set the rivet maybe 50%, something like that. People on Vans Air Force uh, and some of the forums will say they did it 60% or 40%. I don't know. I did it 30%, 70%, about halfway. So I kind of partially riveted each one of those. And then I came in with, um, I, a lot of people, from what I can tell, will keep on going after they do that um, with just the back rivet gun and set the rivets completely that way. Um, I was kind of nervous about doing that. Plus I had this thing from Cleveland uh, Aircraft uh, Supply, which basically it's something you can use with a squeezer. It basically has some rivet sets that are at angles that sort of match the trailing edge. And so I went through with that thing and um, set the remainder of the rivets for the most part, all the way. Um, that thing doesn't in, uh, entirely, it, on my practice kit, it worked really, really well, but on the actual trailing edge of the elevator, um, it didn't let the shop head, it wasn't perfectly flush with the skin. So after I did that, I then went back, and I didn't videotape this, but I then went back with the uh, back rivets uh, uh, set, and I kind of smushed it down the very last little bit. So that's basically what I did in three steps. Partially set with the back rivet gun, set the rest of the way with the uh, Cleveland, the, the uh, trailing edge dies or sets. Um, and then I kind of finished it off a little bit with the back rivet gun. So that's what worked. Um, after I did this, the trailing edge on both of these suckers was absolutely straight. It was almost perfect. Um, I put this uh, angle iron on the, uh, on the trailing edge and it was pretty much perfectly straight. Maybe on one end of, on one of them, it was off by a, 1 64th of an inch at one edge, maybe. Uh, but I was really, really happy with it. There is some lumpiness, especially on the bottom. And I think that that's because I put too much tank sealant on. And there's just too much tank sealant in there. Um, I thought I put a very thin layer, but I don't think it was thin enough. Or at least in some areas, it's a little bumpy. Um, so if you're ever going to do this, just you can put a really, really, really thin layer of tank sealant on. And that's all you really need. Uh, then finally, on the tip ribs, the 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 um what's it called the on the tip ribs you have these rivets you need to put in that are close to the trailing edge and there's just no way you can buck them with a bucking bar uh, i tried it a number of different ways in the practice project every single time i did it i absolutely screwed it up and it looked terrible people on vans air force and some of the other forums say they figured out a way to do it like they'll get a chisel and make a little lever and hit that they're all full of crap it absolutely doesn't work um, okay maybe other people are smarter than me it didn't work for me. So what I did was I used some, uh, I think Mark 319 uh, BS rivets. I think that's what they're called. Um, and they uh, can be substituted actually in many applications for the uh, uh, 332nd rivets. You do have to uh, drill it out to 764 rather than um, uh, 330 seconds. And I got a reamer to do that. Uh, reamers are nice because they don't really leave any um, burrs or not much by way of burrs. So I kind of reamed those holes out. Then I put that uh, uh, pulled rivet in there, pulled it and got those last uh, two rivets that were almost impossible to buck um, I, or squeeze. Uh, I got those rivets set just fine. So that's how I did that. Anyway, this is basically it for this video. Um, so now I pretty much, other than waiting for the uh, tank sealant to dry or set on my trim tabs, um, I'm finished with the elevators, at least for now. I have to put the weights in and put the uh, fiberglass fairings on, but I'm going to do that at a much later date. So I'm kind of happy with that. Um, and next step, I've been working a bunch today on, you know, I've actually uh, put together the tail cone, took it apart, you know, drilled, took it apart, primed everything, started kind of riveting some of the substructures together. And that's kind of my next big step is to actually assemble the tail cone. Some of this stuff, doesn't make for riveting video. Actually, none of this makes for riveting video. If you're watching this, I have no idea why you are. 
but I did a lot of this stuff today where I put together some of the uh, substructures um, for the tail comb. Anyway, next video, I'm going to be assembling the tail comb. So that's it for now.